Hey people, it's Ed Martin Lewis Bud here. Hopefully in this video, I'm gonna save you some money. Well, I mean, you might buy a shoe or two, but I think that probably happens on a monthly basis anyway. Today's video, I'm looking at the ultimate money-saving, most versatile shoes on the market right now. These are the shoes that you can take perhaps on your holiday break. If you want to do a little easy 5K, maybe a longer run on a Sunday, perhaps even a local race or two. What is the most versatile shoe? Thanks for tuning in people, it's always appreciated. Hit that subscribe button and help us get to 40k subs, we're almost there. Also give this video a thumbs up like that really helps out. Danke schön. So I set out to see if I could come up with the most versatile running shoe that I've got within my collection. But firstly, I asked the viewers as to what their most versatile shoes are. Which are the ones they're picking up on a sort of more frequent basis. I had loads of comments on that one. Amado reckons his Takumi Sen 8 have been the most versatile he's got. Been using those up to the half marathon with ease. Lots of the viewers, including Baz L, mentioned the Speed 2 from Socony. Quite a lot of love for the Velocity Nitro and the Deviate Nitro from Puma as well certainly a6 super blast is popping up it's not a shoe i've tried out really I haven't had the opportunity to give it a whirl yet stephen c 1984 though suggests the adios 6 got the typical things in there like the pegasus and i'm not surprised to see alan pelosi's really loving the nova blast 3 as well so i think it's probably the endorphin speed maybe the nova blast and those Puma DV8 Nitro models as well are probably the favourites of the viewers. I think where we've got a world of shoe rotations these days, there's like a shoe for every type of run. Do we really need that? Which pairs will cover the sort of maximum range of runs? The Swiss Army shoe, if you like. I've picked out five models that I think really hit the spot in terms of versatility. First one up for me has to be the Puma DV8 Nitro Elite 2. Absolute banger this one. I think it's probably down to the low weight and the upper's Kind of simplicity itself really is no bells and whistles and no pull tab quick to get a good lockdown around the foot and that p -Bax nitro combo underfoot is heavenly for almost anything so far almost got a hundred miles into this first pair of the shoes and i like them for practically any application worked well for me on some more easy efforts sort of eight minutes to eight minutes 15 per mile just the type of shoe that really feels comfortable regardless of the condition of your legs i think it's down a little bit to the low mass and not so bulky nature of the shoe. Yes, there's a plate here, but it doesn't feel too rigid that it feels odd when you're not running at high tempo. Just forgiving for everything else as well. It's the kind of shoe that makes me ask the question of myself, do I really need these max cushion shoes? I'm a very light sort of person. You know, something like the Invincible Run, is that really necessary? It's like when you hold the two shoes up against each other, this one's just like a, a giant. Lower profile shoes just seem to work for me regardless of the type of run. I've successfully used the shoe over longer runs above 50 miles and had no issue in the days after. No soreness or aching of the muscles and certainly no DOMS. Outsole wise I found them to be pretty solid and versatile. I think they're going to last the test of time. Puma Grip doesn't mess about. As such the Puma DV8 Nitro Elite 2 is my first recommendation in today's video. Forgotten to pack your running shoes on a weekend away? Fear not. The ultimate shoe from my perspective for versatility and availability has got to be the Nike Pegasus 39. It's dead cheap now that the Pegasus 40 is out and you can pick it up at the likes of Sports Direct and pretty much every town's got one of those. It's still a really good shoe if you don't want to spend the earth but you want some quality. I mean it is a bit firmer, perhaps a little more responsive than some of the other shoes out there but hey that's okay if you want to do some faster pace running. The React and Zoom Air units and the most recent models are usable for just about anything. I see people running marathons and easy jaunts around the park in this shoe and there's good reason. Reasonably light and it's full of responsive cushion. It's not the sort of shoe that just kind of compresses away to nothing. I think the great varied outsole pattern there helps it to be one of the most usable shoes across different surfaces and terrains. I mean you could even use it on a dirt track or a light trail and probably get away with it. Do you really need a trail shoe to be honest? I mean yes if you live halfway up a mountain or you've got to go wading through a bog or something but how many people really do that on a very frequent basis? I think as a road runner the pegasus model from the last five or six really tick a lot of boxes and of course you can pick up the pegasus 39 for even less now at discount a great cheap option for versatility okay a bit of a blast from the past for you now this bad boy's looking a little bit faded but still has that endorphin speed smell 
We have the original white mutant version of the Endorphin Speed here from Saucony. Probably one of the most versatile running shoes over the last few years. Pebax midsole here made from the pallet variety. It's a little bit more conducive, I suppose, to a more wider range of running. I think it's probably due to that nylon plate that we had here. Just feels better over different paces. The Pro just felt like you wanted to go much quicker. Just a little bit more increased flexibility here, making it more versatile. I think the viewer polls I ran, like maybe last year and the year before, this shoe came out right at the top. People love the Endorphin Speedline. It's also one of the most favoured amongst marathon runners as well. I was surprised it came right at the top there. You got cushion, but you've also got a little bit of kind of stability and like that guided run from the plate gotta say it's lovely and light on foot and the upper was a real winner it's one of those models you can just throw on foot for practically any type of run perhaps aside wading through muddy old forest trail the outsole perhaps being the only limiting factor here in the endorphin speed tons of colorways and the speed one two is quite interchangeable with little difference between the two so if it sounds like it could work for you then perhaps look at picking up a discount version of the speed two easy to find on deep discounts on many online retailers i think the midsole at times can dictate the versatility of a shoe and that's certainly the case in this one great usable model endorphin speed could spark a bit of discussion this one but how about the Air Zoom Alpha Fly Next Percent? What? I found the original version of the shoe to work for just about everything for me. I mean, how can a shoe with this much cushion not be good for easy recoveries? I mean, yes, there's 14 millimeters of stack there in the heel, but it was super nimble when you get up onto the mid to forefoot. So I think it covered quite a range of runs. I mean, the AirPods are there to be punished. Go on, do it. I mean, that's what they're there for make it happen i had a couple of pairs of these and i found them to be actually very durable they took a good pounding without any problems i didn't have any issues with the upper ripping or anything like that yes it does have a little bit more heft to it than some of the other super shoes these days but it's still coming in a touch lighter than the current version of the alpha fly i see no reason really why you can't use it for just about anything and i see people doing that there was a guy out wearing a pair of these training for an ultra marathon the other day i mean if you're going to be running on loads of gravel and stuff i can see that destroying the exposed midsole here there's some of the paints kind of flecked off of here but it's absolutely usable I mean, the traction on the front of the shoe here is vastly better than the stuff you get on the current version of the Vaporfly Next Percent 3. So a bit of a surprise inclusion, but I think you can see my thinking there. I would suggest, though, perhaps it's not the best casual option to wear down the pub. But for a range of runs, I just think it works. What do you think, people? Let me know down in the comments. I'm sure you will. Okay, I've got one more for you, people, and that is the Adios 6 and 7 from Adidas. I love this one for its sort of pace range and its very light and nimble nature. And the price, too. It is a great price. The airy uppers on these two iterations of the lower budget Adi Zero model are perfect for some summer saunters through the countryside at a nice steady pace, but they're nimble enough for some faster reps or intervals if you choose to partake. I think the combo of foams here fits the build perfectly for a lighter runner, perhaps with a less heavy set build. The light strike in the rear of the shoe does flex and compress over time, so if you find them a bit firm out the box, just get the meat tenderizer out. And the Light Strike Pro in the mid to forefoot of the shoe sings like Justin Hawkins when you hit it just right. Perfect for pace work and pretty much anything in between, really. The outsole, grippy, and it's pretty durable too. I think I've I haven't quite taken these up to 100 miles yet, but it's looking pretty good. Though the only sort of negative is it does pick up quite a lot of stowaways while you're out there. But it's small potatoes in the grand scheme of things. You can always pick these up for sub 100 pounds as well, and I think that makes for a great daily shoe. Not saying that you're too worried about sort of getting too messy or damaged or anything like that. Just get out there and use it and enjoy it. One for the narrower feet though, but I think there is a wide model as well, so search that out if you need a bit of extra width there. Okay, so for 2023, that's my five most versatile shoes right now. What are your Swiss Army shoes? Perhaps fire me a message on Instagram or let me know down in the comments. Musical interlude for you. I've been digging back through my album collection and sometimes I end up gravitating back to Neil Young's albums. At the moment, I'm listening to Tonight's The Night. There's a couple of standout tracks here that I really love, kind of for different reasons, I suppose. Tracks three, World On A String, and number four, Borrowed Tune, 
are just really beautiful, very subtle tracks. One played on piano, which just sounds like the most lonely song ever, and then World on a String, which is just pared down to the bare minimum of instruments. Mellow My Mind as well is another real favourite. Just makes you remember about those times when you had very few responsibilities. All you cared about was like the fish on the line juggling your nickels and dimes, you know, to buy a chocolate bar or something like that. And that was all that mattered. Kind of good, those times. Released back in 1975, absolutely one of Neil Young's best. Part of his Doom trilogy. Although I never think of it being that sort of down. Go and check it out, guys. Tonight's the night by Neil Young. Thanks for tuning in, people. Hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications. Also, give this video a thumbs up, like, and share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Budd, and I'll be seeing you.